The future of farming relies on farmers supporting the honeybee. Trees for Bees is a campaign that's helping them do just that. Federated Farmers and Landcare Research have developed 10 regional guides with advice for appropriate flowering tree and shrub species. I'm providing the scientific information on the flowers for the Trees for Bees project and we have a pollination database and we've got all the kinds of information we need to be able to sort out which plants are the best plants for farmers to plant in a database. Bee nutrition is really important and it's not a very advanced field compared to the, um, the uh, a animal health, but the bees themselves, in order to be really healthy and in order to build up their brood, the, to provision their brood, they need to have protein. And that protein, their, their main source of protein is from pollen. It's practically their only source. If there's no pollen around, they will go to sawdust if they have to, but they need good natural pollen from flowers. The beekeepers, they do use pollen supplements, but in New Zealand beekeepers have told me that those protein supplements that are like artificial pollen, they don't make the bees as healthy, the hives don't thrive, they can't build up the population. So protein is a critical limiting factor in bee nutrition. If they're weak and sick from not enough protein, then they're not going to have good resistance to the diseases. And so it's one of our, it's in our arsenal, it's one of the things we can do, but in New Zealand it's been a very neglected topic. And worldwide, it's people are starting to pay attention. We need to start providing the bees with good nutrition so that they can resist the diseases and the pests like Varroa. 2006 saw the Varroa mite enter through Nelson Port into the South Island. And as a beekeeping community and with some support from the government, we tried very hard to contain that as much as we can. But it's now really broken free. It was uh, found in Canterbury last year. It's now as far south as the Mackenzie Basin where they can actually find it. As you appreciate, and particularly in the South Island over the last five years, we've seen a huge change in the landscape of farming. Where before we had shelter belts, gorse hedges and broom and, and other nectar sources and pollen sources for bees, now we see post and wire and, and dairy cows. And, and that whole landscape is changing. That's a quite a hostile environment for a honeybee. It, it's got no nectar source, it's got no pollen source, and of course it's very much exposed to, to the weather. Well, the flowering time is probably the most critical thing because honeybees are introduced into New Zealand and the native plants have evolved with the, our native bees and our native flies and moths. Yep and birds, and so the honeybee is here, and, and what they use during the season, there's times of the year when there's just not much around. Neither the exotics nor the natives are in flower. Those times of the year, unfortunately, are in early spring when the beekeepers are needing to build up the populations for crop pollination. So you need to fill in the gaps. You need to know that we've got enough flowers for the bees across all the parts of the year when the bees need it, especially when they're building their brood for pollination of the crops or when they're building up their winter stores. Building up the natives are one of the best ways because A, farmers can get financial help sometimes to put in native bush. And the natives, we know they're not gonna be an invasive weed. We know they're not gonna create a problem. They're not gonna be an agricultural weed or something else. The cabbage tree is always named. Flax is always named, wine mania is really good. All the monofloral honey plants like rata and rewa rewa, et cetera, are very good. But what we don't know about these plants is, yes, we can say that the bees like them, but are they high protein? So what we want to do is study what is the protein level in our native plants? And also, which ones of our exotic plants have a good protein level, but are not gonna cause a problem with invasiveness? So we also have in our database what's practical for the farmers. What do they need to, what kind of a plant do they need for their farming operation? And also, what kind of a plant do they need that um, will give them some other benefit, like timber, carbon credits, erosion control, or something else? So we're looking for multi-purpose plants. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.